Alrighty, <clears throat> welcome back to the van build. I am Confluence, aka Krishan, and today's a bit of a mishmash of things, to be honest, because it was a bit of a mishmashy kind of time. I uh, will be unboxing my diesel here, very exciting, very Chinese, uh, sorting out the bed posts, messing around with some stuff in the back to make sure everything's in the right place, like positioning my sub and checking the heater goes in the right spot. And then the really exciting bit was wiring up my lights to the 12 volt system. The lights that are illuminating me at this very moment. Oh, how very jolly. So when I originally planned the van build, I was imagining a fancy schmancy heater, professionally installed, tapped into the fuel tank for maximum space efficiency and all those kind of lovely things. When I looked at how much that would actually cost, it was eye-wateringly huge. And I kind of just decided to proceed regardless and forget about it for a bit. But I'd realized that it was absolutely going to be essential because even in the summer, sometimes it can be a bit chilly in the UK. And so the winter would just be completely ruined or even autumn or spring would just be unnecessarily unpleasant for someone who hates being cold as much as I do and yeah spoiler alert yeah the heater was completely essential I still see some people on van build groups saying that you don't need a heater and I actually just do not know what the hell they're smoking because in my opinion you absolutely 100,000 million percent need a heater even a really well insulated van is nowhere near as insulated as a house I think typically my van gets down to about four degrees above the outside temperature overnight and that's with it being heated the evening before and it's reasonably well insulated it could be better insulated but not that much better and to make it better you would have had to spend a lot more money than I did so realistically you need a heater and honestly the Chinese ones are not that difficult to get your head around there's a lot of information out there there's a lot of videos i'm probably not going to try and do a detailed one because i don't think my install is particularly great i've definitely not done some things right but i think it's fine and i think i at least understood the downsides and benefits of what i was doing to some degree at least and, and made decisions that were educated the video that probably helped me the most was from tiny planet because she's similar to me not someone with a load of construction experience not an expert just someone figuring things out and so she explains things in a very down-to-earth very complete simple way so it was nice unboxing the heater and and actually I already knew what almost all of the pieces did and there was just a few things that I needed to figure out that I had some ideas for which made me feel quite well prepared really I have some bits of time lapse of me unboxing the heater but you know it's not that important there's there's loads of bits and I'll all cover the, the install at least from this kind of overview perspective uh, at a later date when I actually did it which was quite a bit later on actually for now I just needed it for the size to figure out roughly where it was going to go and how much space I needed to leave for it in the build or specifically the rear of the van now initially I'd, I plan to have my subwoofer in the very middle of the van for maximum quality stereo but it's kind of silly and unnecessary because uh, sub frequencies are omnidirectional so a little bit of left and right isn't really gonna make that much difference for most of my time having this sub it's been next to my desk and that is noticeable because you do have all the sound coming from one side it's like it's hard panned to the left and that's not so nice but as long as it's roughly in the middle you're not gonna have any issue with that and if I put it right in the middle I wouldn't have had any space for my cool box and I would have just had a really pointless gap between my batteries and the sub so the sub I chose to sit flush with the edge of the batteries and in a similar way to the batteries I brought the sub in and I built a frame to sit around it to kind of enclose its little little conical feet and that worked pretty well I just kept checking it at every stage to make sure that I hadn't accidentally made it too small and everything was fine I had to double up the baton at the back because there's quite a big overhang over the edge of the feet so I needed something to secure it to to use the little eyelets again similar to how I did with the batteries although I used less highly rated ones because it's not as heavy as the batteries but it's still quite chunky so I did definitely want to make sure that it was strapped down because it would be very bad if it got loose 
I, I think I also glued this frame to the floor much like I did with the battery surround um, for the same reason and screwed into battens that I have under the floor as well. And, and at this point I wanted to do something impactful with the electrical setup having gotten it all kind of sorted but not, nothing really nothing really hooked up and working and, and the most important thing was definitely the lights because I was having to work in the van a little bit due to a spell of rain and although I have the roof light at that end of the van this end of the van is really pretty gloomy even in the day even in sunshine and in in cloudy skies it's it's very gloomy so I figured the lights would be super useful to wire up and, and be quite satisfying to get that done in order to do that I needed to crimp all the ends and figure out which cables were which at the fuse box end so I sorted out the bed posts like I'd already put one in place as part of setting up the power station but I just wanted to get the rest of those sorted so they were all in the right spot so that I was running cables in the right place. I had three bits, chunks, pieces of 2x2 two two, which is 45 by 45 millimeters, and I needed uh, one more so I split one of the excess bits of 3x2 down to be roughly the same size which took a while because splitting along the grain with a jigsaw is a very bad way of doing it but it's what I had and so I just had, kind of had to get on with it <laughs> um, it probably took like in excess of half an hour just to just to make this cut but hey you know it worked it's not not pretty not great but I did it and it was fine I think now in, in the initial stages I think it would have been these two lights here above the desk I discovered something rather awkward and that was the lights that were supposed to fit inside two 32 millimeter holes like push fit into these holes didn't actually fit into 32 millimeter holes now I, I did also suspect maybe it was a hole saw that was a problem but when i measured the two it was pretty clear that the hole saw was pretty accurate and that in fact the lights were just wrong about what size hole they needed i don't know what size hole they actually did need but it definitely was bigger than 32 millimeters because there was no it, you know it wasn't a case of oh it's a little bit snug and they're not it's going to be a squeeze to get them in it, there was no way they were getting in these holes so i had to try and figure out how to cut them down to get the lights in and as everything was already fixed up it's not like i could really take them off the ceiling because the the ceiling was built and there's cables behind them so i didn't really want to start trying to get my whole saw out and mess with accidentally ruining insulation or possibly punching a hole through my roof so i initially tried just sanding them down with my metal files because i had them and i thought maybe that would work but after a period of time that i don't remember a long enough period of time <laughs> i seem to have done absolutely nothing with this technique so i decided to go and try something else what i landed on was using my mum's stanley knife which was a bit nicer than the one that i got in my really cheap toolbox that i've had for a few years um that also had a set of spare blades and yeah just just started cutting away at them with the stanley knife which is definitely sketchy as hell and i definitely took some chunks and out of my ceiling and made some scratches and things like that and it was it was a pretty frustrating experience i also like I, as you can imagine trying to shave down a circular hole with a stanley blade doesn't exactly lead to the most perfect of circles so all of them a little bit imperfect and there's a little bit of light leaking out the side because of that kind of annoying but i mean it doesn't really doesn't really make that much difference to how they work so it's it's not really a big deal but yeah after about 45 minutes of scraping and scrabbling and scratching away i did eventually get the first two in uh in a very ugly hole but i mean it fit and they worked so that was cool oh i never want to do that again but I've got to do fucking four more of them. I kind of swore at this point that I wasn't going to do the rest because it was such a long and painful task that I didn't, I just couldn't fathom doing it right away. But then my stubbornness prevailed and I just decided to do them anyway because I just wanted to get it done and didn't want to have this horrible task hanging over me 
And I guess I also hoped that it would go a bit quicker on the subsequent ones with the practice that I'd just put in. And I think that was the case. I think it probably took me about two hours to do the other, to do the whole set, or maybe just the other, the next two, the next two sets of two. I've got two, two, two. So yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a sort of frustrating day of, of hacking, but I did get them all wired up. But the holes really were very ugly. <laughs> I'm glad that you can't see them because they looked horrendous. I had to do a little bit of figuring out which wires were which at the other end, just through pure trial and error, because I couldn't label them and get them through the conduit. And thankfully I got really lucky with this and it didn't take very many tries, because obviously you've got to test every positive with every negative. And that could have taken a while because that's quite a large number of possibilities, but actually I got most of them within a couple of attempts, some I got first time. So it all came together and I had light and I'm actually super happy with them. I was at that time as well. I still am now, which is great. They are definitely bright enough. I like the warmth. They're not, uh, I went for the warm white, which I'm definitely glad I did because I'm not a fan of really uh, white. <laughs> really white white. I like my white to be less white. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, um, it's more warm and, and reminiscent of like old incandescent bulbs. I definitely prefer that to really blue white light that's just super harsh. So yeah, I like them and they provide all the light I need. I'm happy that I put them on four different switches. I've got one by the door. That's so great when getting into the van at night. That's something I didn't have when I was in Australia. Well, I kind of did, but the, the switches were kind of hard to find. They were tucked away above the door and they were just a bit irritating. This one, never a problem to find it. So you can always light things up and I have full control over how much light and where I have the light, which I think is really important. Some people might think it's excessive. To me, I think lighting and controlling your lighting is, is, is important. It sets the mood of the van. Obviously I don't have any other lighting at the moment. I do plan to have more and I do have bits to create more, but it proved to be a lot more complicated than I thought. So that's probably gonna be an entire series of videos at a very later point when I actually figure it out. Cause I wanna do something really funky with those given that I don't actually need them for lighting purposes. It's a big old mess down here though. <laughs> Next video is gonna be about finishing off the the bulkhead like clad doing the last little bit of insulation cladding it and building housing for my usb and 12 volt sockets that are all along here um so yeah kind of exciting lots of electrical stuff coming together things kind of feeling like um i'm well over the hump and and now creating stuff that i can really see um stuff that's going to be useful so yeah i'll i'll catch you in the next one see you later taters